tests. I've had six CAT scans. I've had four MRIs. I've had ten euro tests and ten school tests, and still no results of that. <coughs> so yeah, I felt I felt hedged in personally. But I felt even more anger for those that were outside of me. I felt a, a different type of view, though, a different focus, a different empathy. Let's look at Job again. This time, chapter 7, where Job is ready to throw in the towel. When I think my bed will comfort me and my couch will ease my complaint, you can kind of see him there getting ready to watch the TV. Even then, you frighten me with dreams and terrify me with visions. <clears throat> so that I prefer strangling in death rather than his body. I despise life. I would not live forever. Let me alone. My days have no meaning. Wow. I have to share with you. I, I, I was very close to that. When you know that the next meal is going to offer you nothing but pain, then there's very little to look forward to. When you're entrapped in a body that may be disease-ridden, how do you make it to the next minute or hour or day? What did I think about this challenge? Well, my second bit of wisdom addressed hopelessness. We must find peace with the ways and the walls of the sovereign God. God put us here. It wasn't an accident where we are. He knows exactly where we are and he knows how to care for us. Now, I can just tell you that when you're you're in a troubled position, you bet this was makes you think. I cried about this. I didn't like the job he was doing with me, and I especially didn't like it with other people. I didn't like our medical system. But I said, well, we have to stand up with courage to face, even accept and embrace the wall and hitched in challenges that we need. <coughs> If we have faith, I believe we must be resigned to this conclusion. There are no accidents in God's plans, so you are exactly where you should be. But there's no middle ground either. You either believe God is good, or you believe He isn't good. He's not good some of the times and bad the other times. He's one or the other. And I also realized I was responsible for my response, for my actions, and for my walk as a Christian. Nobody else. No one else could feel what I was feeling. I could not feel what other people were feeling. But I had a deepened empathy and thought I understood a little bit more about suffering. So I made my choice. I grew closer to God. The next wisdom nugget came pretty easily. It was about hope. If you believe God is good, He's with us. It is with Him that we must find peace, hope, and comfort. Only He can choose what's best for us. And wow, is that a heart? Is that just a unbelievably hard. I thought about it and I said, depend on God and the prayers of others <coughs> that we may rely on Him alone. What will come of this? I asked myself. I've been blessed to have so many that earnestly care, that pray, that offer a helping hand, and still can love me in the condition that I'm in as I grow in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's just humble, overwhelming. I know he's with me. I know that he feels that this is best for me. But I gotta tell you, every day is not sweeter than the day before. People that are hurting and are suffering, the day before is not, the next day isn't sweeter. Another, the next day is another day to deal with. So I had questions. I started to look for more answers. Always more with engineers, I guess. Always more for me. Then it struck.
struck me that I was still blessed beyond belief with friends, family, and a God that knows what's best for me. It's not about now, but eternity. I said, okay. Lord, I understand. I, I understand. It was at this time that I realized I could not judge anyone else's hedged-in or walled-in feeling either. I could not feel the hurt of cancer, or I couldn't feel the hurt from a stroke victim, or diseases like RSD. But I'll tell you what, I could sure empathize about the same feelings of despair, or a God that appears to have forsaken us, that I could do. I could possibly help pe people realize that the next wisdom nugget about life in general. And this, uh, this applies to us all, whether you're suffering or not. And this may be trite to you, but there will never be a better time or moment in your life than this one that's given to you as a gift. You choose what to do with the gift. Not many of us think like I did that the gift of eating was a gift. No. Never mind look back and, and take for granted the gift of eating. The gift to enjoy fatty food or a dessert. Oh Lord, I'd like to go back six and a half months. Well, that's a wisdom you can take with you. I may never able to be able to eat again, be like before, and I've come to that recognition. But our gifts, they're opportunities to love each other, to forgive, and to serve. There's never going to be a better moment than now. How many of us say, well, that can wait till next week, or I'll give my friend a call in a few hours, and no, well, that can wait. Don't wait. You just don't know what life's going to bring you. And if you fail to grasp that concept, life's going to overwhelm you. If the adversary can get us to focus on our past mistakes, wrong turns, work deadlines, broken relationships, and wasted opportunity to love unconditionally, then he's stolen the moment from us. All we have is now. Lose our pride, I said. Forgive and forget and grow in Christ's love. I believe that feeling one's weakness deepens our dependence on God, on Christ for strength, each day, maybe each hour, maybe each minute. I think the weaker we are, the weaker we feel, the harder we lean on Jesus, our Savior. The harder we lean, the stronger we grow spiritually, even if our bodies waste away. My next nugget was, <clears throat> true sanctification is to live without complaint, free of heart and mind to love and help others, even when you don't feel so great. Okay, I didn't say I did these things very well. <laughs> Only that I learned them. I'm not a great example of this nugget. Complete dependence on God is not an easy choice. Serving others when you don't feel so great, not so easy. But I said, I still have questions. I said, why doesn't God help us more, or at least a little bit more? Surely it's a miracle or two left for the people of Del Rio. Where's the fairness, I continued to ask. And people stepped up and prayed and gave and served and loved. And I saw that this brought new opportunities to grow spiritually for all of us. 